All right, so let's see if we can do all of this in under 10 minutes. We're gonna open up Visual Studio. We're gonna create a new project. We're gonna create a C Sharp Web API. We're gonna test that Web API locally. And then we're gonna deploy that Web API to an Azure Web App and then see it up and running. Let's get started. Full disclosure here, I've never created a web API specifically for C Sharp. Um, I've only built like .NET Core web apps, but not specifically web APIs. So this is gonna be new for me. If it's new for you, great, I hope you enjoy. So I'm gonna open up Visual Studio 2019 here. Now I'm gonna create a new project. Uh, if you don't have Visual Studio installed, you can just go to uh, like Google or something and then just Google Visual Studio Community Edition. It, that one's 100% free. Um, or if you wanna pay for it, that's cool too. So what I wanna do is I wanna use the ASP.NET Core web application. I don't wanna use the .NET Framework. .NET Framework is specific to Windows and we wanna make sure that this is uh, more open source and available across platforms. So what I wanna do now is uh, I'm gonna choose web application. Now this is very similar to like if you've just created web apps in the past, uh, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna name this JL Web API. Now the key difference here, uh, again, if you've built them in the past, like typically you would just choose web application if you're just uh, uh, building a web application or you could choose like React, Angular. Uh, but in our case, we wanna choose API. So this is gonna build the API, uh, API web application itself. And that's exactly what we wanna choose. So this is pretty interesting. What this, these advanced settings here is number one, it's gonna configure HTTPS for us. And then number two, it's going to enable Docker support. Now, I think I've seen this before where if you enable Docker support, it's gonna to attempt to download a, uh, like some sort of Docker image uh, for .NET Core if you don't already have one. Well, let's see, so we're gonna click create here. And then this is gonna open up our Visual Studio. Uh, we're gonna see some like getting started here to build, to deploy, uh, learn the ID that's needed. And yep, this is exactly what I was referring to. So what this is doing is, it's actually pretty cool. As soon as the project opens, like you don't even have to do a .NET run or anything to build or, or restore nothing. Like this is just gonna automatically start creating uh, this Docker file for you. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull down everything that's needed like from a um, Docker image perspective. Now, it looks like I have a warning here. You're building a Docker image from Windows against a non-Windows Docker host. Um, all files. Okay, cool. So this is just letting us know about the permissions, uh, which is fine. I, I don't think we care about that right now at the moment. This is just more of like a dev environment anyway, so that's fine. Um, you can check on any connected services if you want to. You can publish, right? Which is, you know, what we're gonna end up doing at some point. Now, what I wanna do is manage NuGet packages. So I'm just gonna browse here. And what you can do here is just search for anything that has like web API related, right? So say you wanna download uh, this package here, you can go ahead and do that. Anything that you'll need specific for uh, web APIs, it's not gonna come by default. So you'll just have to install that new good package there. And then let's see what else we got. So I'm gonna close out of here. I'm gonna open up my program.cs. This is, yeah, this is gonna be like super, super basic. Uh, this is just gonna like open up the application for us. Uh, this isn't even gonna show any like API URLs or anything like that, or like home pages or, or anything like that. Uh, weather forecast, oh, this looks like it's something that's built in for the web API. Uh, oh, look, here's our Docker file. This is automatically built, right? Like I didn't build this or anything. Um, this is pretty interesting because this is, this looks pretty similar to what you would see if you're just building like a standard web application, uh, not a web API. So it's going out, it's one, it's bringing down the SDK image, and it's also bringing down the runtime image, which is super interesting. So I'm just gonna close out of this here, that's fine. Uh, we have our program. 
we have our startup here. I thought that we would see something like some sort of standard um, for the API itself for like any routes. Um, like I've built web APIs before, but they've all been in Python. So just using Flask, right? And then I would have my standard methods and definitions for my routes. I'm wondering if using route, um, let's see what we can find. Hold on, let me maximize this. Uh, C sharp web API example. Uh, yeah, this is very similar to what we already did. Um, this just looks different. It looks like this is a, yeah, this is Visual Studio 2017. That's why it looks different. I'm on 2019. Uh, so we can add models if we wanted to, uh, if we wanted to bring in this specific namespace. But I don't want to do that. I'm more interested in like, I want to see public. Uh, what I want to see is something like routes. Um, let me see. Uh, build based on different controllers. No, maybe it's not like a thing in C sharp. Um, I'm still super new to C sharp. I primarily either code in PowerShell or Python or like HCL for Terraform or YAML. Um, but I'm curious. No. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like, hey, hold on, uh, register the database context. The container provides the services, update the startup, with the following. Now, let's see. Yeah, see like this is something that I'm looking for. Um, this would be like a route, right? Like you would go to the local host or, or wherever it's hosted and slash people slash all. But I wonder where this actually goes. I'm assuming this goes in the program.cs. I don't think it would go in the startup. Let's see. Uh, okay, so it says to get started, but I'm not actually seeing. API to do items. Yeah, see, so they're going to that path. Where is the route being defined? Oh, it looks like it's actually being defined at, maybe at the namespace. Is that how C Sharp does it? To do items. I don't know, to do API. Let me see, to do items. Okay, yeah, here's the method. Post to do items. Uh, examine the posted items create method. Okay, so this looks like it's maybe just like a method here. Huh, interesting. Okay, let's go back. That's fine. I just was kind of curious based on how you would build the actual routes there. And let's go to open up. Uh, maybe I could do it from here. Let's see. Oh. Did not mean to do that. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, let's just uh, open up Windows Terminal here. It's a little bit bigger. Let's see. Properties. Okay, sources, repos, that's where I wanted to go. Right, I'm gonna go into I forget what I called it. MJL Web API. Okay. So C D. Okay. 
Okay. I'm at Ron. See this thing pop up here. No. Grab my URL, go back to my web browser. And then, oh, nice. Huh, interesting. You know what, see, so <laughs> that's that's why I'm pretty sure there's some sort of route. Um, but it doesn't show me. Like this is obviously up and running, but I wonder if you need to like add the route in somewhere first. So I'm gonna try this again. No. So let's go back to C sharp code. Hmm. All right. So let's try to figure out. This is interesting. Let's see. Yeah, those are definitely the URLs. Oh, wait. Launch URL slash weather forecasts. Ha ha. Maybe. There it is. Nice. Okay, so that is where so this is where like your API is actually going to be right so then I wonder just out of curiosity and then if I change this to like Mike's website I have no idea if this is going to work but let's see so no nah. Go back here and dot net run again. Nope, <laughs> that didn't work. Okay, so that's not the way it works. Oh no, wait, hold on. Ah, what happened? Wait, back, 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 back. Public class. Oh, because I was outside of the namespace. Duh. Let's try this again, a little bit less silly. Okay, so now let's try Mike's sick site. Go back to my terminal here. Okay, so that's up. Let's go back to our website. Okay, that's still up. Let's look up Mike's sick site. No. Uh, weather forecast was the one we did before, right? Weather forecast. Okay. Yep. That brings it up. So let's go back here. Public class. Okay. This must be set somewhere else. So hold on. Uh, do I have like pages or something? Weather forecast. Oh, launch around, blah, blah, blah. Okay. There it is. So just out of curiosity. Da, 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 da. Nope. Let's do six. I'm in the launch settings. It looks like this block of code here is what's pulling up the URL. So I'm gonna stop my site, rerun it. And then now this shouldn't work. Oh, it still does work. Is it cast or something? Come on. Darn. Did I save this? Definitely saved it. Uh, oh, I wonder if I need to like rebuild the Docker image. That would be interesting. 
Uh, but I feel like it shouldn't have to. I don't know. Oh, uh, here we go. That's why. Okay. So. Ah, uh, yeah. See, it is actually building from this Docker image. And that's why this works. Okay, interesting. So then. Well, I wonder if I just do this. Let's see. Uh, okay, let's try it again. Do our .NET run here. And let's see what happens. Okay, so, nope. Let's try weather forecast. So strange, am I like cached or something? Hold on. Totally still working. Okay, yeah, so it looks like you actually have to like maybe rebuild that Docker image. Um, Cause remember that Docker image that we saw in the beginning? That might be like what's actually building the site, right? Um, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I could play around with that in the, in the next video. But what this video was primarily was just publishing it. Uh, I just started rabbit holing a bit, so that's my bad. Okay, cool. So now we can actually deploy our code somewhere. So we can do an app service for Linux and then we'll create new. Uh, we'll de just deploy the code. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can just deploy the code here. This is going to pull up our app service in Azure. Here I'm logged in. Uh, this is like my Azure account that I log into. I'm just going to name this MJL Web API. Uh, we'll put it in this resource group. It's fine. Uh, the hosting plan. I'm. Oh, can I not change it to free? No. Hold on. Let's see. And let's see. Huh. Okay. Um. I thought I could. Nah. Hold on. Darn. Really? Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm gonna delete it anyways when we're done. So this is going to start deploying. I don't know how long this is going to take it. It probably shouldn't take too, too long, but let's see. So our app service got deployed. Here it is. Now if I head over to the portal, I'm going to see my app service here. And on, yeah, it was definitely over 10 minutes, but that was because of my rambling. So we kind of failed, kind of didn't. I don't know. But either way, here's how you can deploy a web API and uh, go through some of the JSON and the pages and what the web API will look like locally. Thanks for watching.